Hey, everybody, I'm Josh Wolf. Hello, everybody, I'm Jacob Wolf. And this is Hey Man. Hey, man. Hey, man, what's up? Yo, I'm just here in Austin, Texas. Um, dude. Fucking love that city. So much. Now, I want to apologize right now already for hotel Wi-Fi. Because of hotel Wi-Fi, I'm going to cut this probably a little short, this podcast. Um, it's just for frustrating for me. Um, a couple things, just reminding everybody. First of all, everybody, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Uh, Jay Wolf um, will be out for a bunch of them. We're going to be in Cleveland this upcoming week, uh, September 16th and 17th. Uh, we got a bunch of dates coming up. New Mexico, you guys have been asking. This is my first theater tour. It's happening in October. I'm so fucking excited. First week in Fuck October. Yeah. So please come out for that. Your support would mean a lot. Um, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Australia, Jacob Wolf and I will be there. And New Zealand, last two weeks of January. So Let's go. Yeah, dude, get your popcorn ready. Come um, on now. I'm super pumped for that. Super pumped for, for, for football this weekend. I, I'm in Austin for uh, yesterday through that Texas Alabama. Texas Bama game. Oh yeah. my lord! But listen, dude, I have to tell you. And last night I played at ACL Live, which is like on, was on my list of venues that I wished I could have played in my life, and I did it last night. And your brother was there. Trev was there, which was super cool. But yeah. he's going to come out more. But I want to let you know before we go any further and we talk football and all the other stuff we want to talk about, I got you something while I was here. Oh, God. To uh, a little, Not going to lie. When you say I got you something without telling me what it was prior or calling me when you bought it, excuse yeah. me. Well, listen, dude, I got you something. And um, this is for when you come on the road with me and, you know, you've wanted to be involved in the music part. Yeah. And we've tried to figure out what you could do that would, you know, really enhance the show. So I got you something that I think is really going to help the show. Can I guess first? Can I yes. guess first? Great. I am really hoping that oh, it's I'm going to give you three guesses. Three guesses. Okay. Something that you're going to come on stage when I start to play and that, that you and it will help. I, I think, I think, hey, don't get distracted by football. If I can't have it on, you can't have it on. All right. <laughs> um, what I think it is and what I'm hoping it is, truthfully, thinking about it, I hope it's an in sync mic. Okay. Is it one of those that tapes to my head? Okay. That is not it. Damn. Two more guesses. I'm trying to think guitar wise. Oh, is it a triangle or a tambourine? Fuck yeah. I was right. <laughs> Yo, dude, straight up triangle. I I'm going to have it. you fucking ding every now and then. Oh, my God. How great is this fucking triangle? The fucking triangle is pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. I, I was going to get you yeah. finger thimbles. It's even funnier, not going to lie. But the yeah. triangle is great. The triangle makes me laugh because every now and then just seeing you go just – Nothing, 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 and then just go, bing, and then just put it down. Or a tambourine might have been funny, because then you can just go all out with a tambourine. I had the tambourine, but the tambourine is actually kind of, I think a tambourine, me personally, you know, I think you can be cool with a tambourine. It's you know, okay. you can be cool with a tambourine. You know what you're not cool with? Who's, who's, who's the first, who, name a cool person that plays the tambourine. A cool person who plays like that's their active instrument, the tambourine. Or, or name some. I mean, I bet you any musician can play the tambourine or yeah, use dude, the tambourine. Let me tell you something. I've seen a Black Crows concert and seen Chris Robinson play the tambourine. I, I've seen mm -hmm. Mick Jagger play the tambourine. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. But just because they're cool already. And you put an, an instrument in front of them doesn't mean you know that doesn't count. I'm like, not saying the tambourine is cool, but you can like be cool and play the tambourine. You can, well, yeah, but they're two separate things. Like you can't be already cool and then put a tambourine in front of you, and it's still you're still cool. But like give it to a normal person who's not as cool. I don't know if they look so cool playing the tambourine. I would say that about any instrument. Okay, but this your point. I will look cool playing the triangle. Dude, you're gonna look cool no matter what. I, I, part of me wanted to unwrap it and play it 
but I'm, I want you to do it all on stage. I think it's super funny. And it has a little yellow ribbon for you to tie it on my arm. Love it. Should I go? You're gonna, back you're, to... you're, you're gonna give me a triangle solo, though, right? Fuck yeah! Just hitting the back? triangle as hard as I can, as fast as I can, for thirty seconds sounds super funny. Do you know what we should do? What, Jakey? We should write a song about the kid who plays triangle in the band. And at first, people make fun of him. You know, it's almost like a kid's, like a children's. Yeah, story. yeah, 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 yeah. And soon he's like the fucking coolest. And then we could shoot a music video. Oh, what? Might be pretty funny. Oh, my God. Like, it's, it's a song about a dude, a, a kid who he's just got no musical talent or something. But he ends up playing triangle. And at first, he loves a triangle. And at first, everybody makes fun of him. Somehow he has to save the day with the triangle. Right, right. We'll figure. We'll 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 put we'll put a pin in that and come back to it. I mean, why not? Okay, you don't want to talk about it right now. I mean, we could talk about it right now, but I feel like it's going to take more than the podcast for us to go through it. Well, yeah, but it might be good to birth a few ideas. I can't believe I'm looking out the window at the hotel that I used to stay at. Huh? That's interesting. Um, but but uh, okay, so. That's the idea. It has to be structured like a children's book, right? That's kind right. of the idea of the story. Mm -hmm. Dude who's not that popular finds the triangle. I'll figure it. I'll have to look at a couple children's books to see how they're structured. Well, good thing you have a bunch because you used to read them to a bunch of other stoned adults on your high life. So. Yeah, but those children's <laughs> books I don't think are the ones that people are going to want to. Maybe they're structured the same way. You think so? The children's book. So, I mean, I don't know. I get this shirt today. It's a good shirt. Yeah, I think so. Oh, dude. Now we just need to get you some purple shoes to go with it. I think I found some purple docks. Like that yeah. purple dock? Yeah. Mm. Yes or no? I don't know. You already got the rose ones. I feel like doing the purple. I mean, but look, like. I could, you know, I wear purple shoes. I wear pink shoes. So, I mean, like, I don't really think the color of your shoes matters now that I think about it. I mean, you like docks, though. They fit your feet well. You've been wearing Look, them since, like, 92. So, Dude, I was at a clothing store today, and I've just – I've figured out that, like, you know, when you guys were younger, I kept my eccentricities mm -hmm. covered up a little bit. <laughs> thank you sorry have you, did you have you noticed that that as you guys have gotten older i've just kind of let loose a little more which you should and i i think that's good for you because it's still it's still another thing for you it's like you don't like to spoil yourself but you like to buy other people things but now that you're letting go a little bit you're starting it's it's still more of that self-care like that both of us are still learning every day like yeah. part of letting go and being able to buy yourself something nice is part of self-care and you should be doing it yeah for me it's more about like you know i kept it pretty i kept especially also my clothing pretty well yeah but also with us in the house growing up there wasn't a lot of money to go around there was zero so money. i mean like right that's what i'm saying so you didn't have the ability to buy eccentric things right no, yeah, so yeah. There, there was there was never any reason for it and when you were spending extra money it was spending extra money on us yeah, like, so, you know what Trevor and I were talking about today, dude? Um, yeah. And by the way, for those of you listening, Trevor is my oldest son. He's here in Austin with his girlfriend, Phoebe, uh, Jesse. By the way, dude, your oldest brother is such a good dude. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He's such a thoughtful, he's such a good guy. Yeah, it's 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 why I looked up to him so much when I was a kid because I didn't get to see him so much so often. I only yeah. got to see him for twice out of the year, uh, three weeks at a time. It was three weeks for Christmas break, and then it was, you know, three weeks to a month for summer, and that was it. And then he went to the army, and you know, so he's always just done the honorable thing. So you know, what a it was such a bummer to me when he, for me when he moved back to Seattle. 
Yeah, I mean, look, uh, I, I think, you know, obviously we both know everything happens for a reason. And we wouldn't be where we are now if those decisions were changed. Yeah. We could be somewhere else. We could be somewhere better. We could be somewhere worse. But that's nothing we can dread on. Trust me, I, I wish he would have lived with us for his entire life. Yeah. I think I, I wish both Kate and Trevor would have lived with us their entire life because do I think life would be different? 100%. Yeah. But, you know, there's always time to still, you know, build memories and, with your family throughout time as people get older. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. And, 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 and <clears throat> if you're listening or watching, people have asked me a lot, like, why aren't there more stories about my oldest son or about my daughter? And the truth is there, there are. Like, if you watch Father of the Year, there's jokes in there about my daughter and about my oldest son. But truth of the matter is, all of the jokes, most of the jokes about them happened and were being told when nobody knew who I was. Yeah. It was when I was still a young young comic figuring out how to do what I was going to do. And then by the time people knew who I was, not only were were they not living at the house? Yeah. So they, the, but so you also had to change up your material because the years went by. So you had to create new stories. You were the one at the house. And I was the one at the house yeah. and I was doing plenty of stupid shit. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, but yeah, but you know, it is what it is. And you know, we're all still living our lives, but you know, we, we have a family group chat and we're all still checking in and we're all still making sure that we're good. And honestly, yeah. this is the most I've, Probably talked to Trevor or seen Trevor in the last Yo, dude. Four years. He's talking about moving to Nevada. Nevada. Fuck yeah. Nevada. 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 Yeah. I I I seems like a good place for him. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I think you should too. Yeah, I know you think I should. Really? I said I know you think I should. Oh, yeah, we, oh, we, oh. we've 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 talked about this already. The big big thing for me though is man, I am not trying to sit in 116 degree heat every day. Good. Googly moogly. That sounds okay. terrible. Let me ask you a question. How hot was it in the valley? 108. Okay. So here's my, deal. here's my deal. I'm not going out on 108 or 116. 100%. So it doesn't, you know what I mean? I'm yeah, not, I get that. It, but like, it, if I have to go out, I'd rather go out in 108 than 116. Like For sure. But guess what? Cheaper. Taxes. No taxes. I mean, shit, Amon for the price that we're like, Amon and I for the price that we're paying for this apartment could rent a two story house in Nevada. Like, my man, I would rent us the dopest podcast studio. I would pull in the Vegas Axe to come pod with us. I reached out to Tyson, or I tried to, anyways. We'll see what happens. Like, like, like Mike Tyson? Yeah, man, I have an idea that for him, for him and I, that I think would be a fucking blast. Okay, and that sounds cool. Yeah, and I think that he and I could have a really good time. Really good time. Is uh, it weed related? It is. Figured. I don't want to say it out loud because it's easily stealable. Yep, a hundred percent. We'll talk about it off camera. Yeah, but dude, it would be so fucking cool. I mean, that would be fucking awesome. Oh my god. He Yo, was a fucking I, legend. I, I, you and your brother have such different styles as far as clothing. I was in a clothing clothes store today and I was like, I'm going to get this. And he was like, don't get that. But I was like, man, if Jacob was here, he'd have told me to get that. You're, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Oh, also, I forgot something. Last, since last we talked, or last we parted, I added a new tattoo to my body. You do have a new tattoo. I do have a new tattoo. So my buddy McKay, shout out my guy, um, his sister is a tattoo artist. And she was having a flash sale. And he was like, I'm, I'm just going to get a quick tattoo. Do you want to see what she has? And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, let's try and get me in. So. Now, my question, and that's a Playboy bunny. My question is twofold. Why? that size and why that location um why that size one size only whatever the stencil was is what the size was um and then this arm because and then my left arm because my right arm is all kind of like meaningful stuff and this was just kind of a doodle and one that i just like my first nope. like uh compulsive tattoo honestly it's not the arm it's the location it's further down 
Like it's yeah, a, I, I put it. I put it near my elbow. Yeah, I put it near How my elbow. You didn't go up here because I wanted to save this for possibly something bigger or something more. Like for me, I have this one here. And then the guitar on my other side. So I just kind of mirrored it because I, I like the placement of that. Because with a long, like with a long baggy tee short sleeve, you don't see it. But when I have my short sleeves on, you can see it. So I just I just liked it to be visible. Are you gonna sleeve it up both sides? Ah, uh, I don't know. I kind of want to, like not gonna lie, I'm fully addicted to tattoos. They're just awesome. Um, my right side is gonna be super meaningful. You know, obviously, you know, my my top of my right arm is gonna be like a whole multiple pieces to jack. Um, and then, you know, all the other quotes that I want, I don't think I'll go full sleeves like McKay speaking of, but I'll probably do a patchy sleeve on my left arm. And then my right arm is probably going to be pretty full. All right. I was, I almost, I almost got the playboy bunny on my thigh. Really? I thought about it. That's interesting. I thought about it. Cause remember when we were, we were just uh, in Indiana and I was looking at my legs and I go, I kind of want to like that too. Yo, you're. Your and your legs. I was telling you this the other day. Your legs, like your thighs, are sneaky big, dude. Yeah, yeah. For for me, like standing up, you're like, oh, your thighs aren't that big. But then I sit down, and you're like, oh, well, they're not that small. Yeah. yeah. I, I you you th- you you got sneaky thickums. <laughs> Go. Uh, I'm so happy that I decided to eat start eating red meat again. I fucking bet you've been missing out on some of the best food in the world. God, who I had forgotten how good steak is, dude. Holy yeah. shit. I'm going tonight. I mean, I'm getting a tomahawk. Oh, the 40 ounce? I might split it. Or I might get that Wagyu. The y- dude, I'm telling you right now, the Wagyu steak I had in Panama. Get the fuck out of here. Panama. That thing was so ridiculously good. It was just, by the way, if they try to put anything else but salt and pepper on your steak, send it back. Should I punch him? The Wagyu is only supposed to be cooked with salt and pepper and no oil. When you put it on a piping hot skillet, the fats from the marble in the meat will cook itself and, and come out. So, yeah. Nothing yeah. else. If they cook it with anything else, they're doing it wrong. Good 100%. to know. Good to know. And generally, when you buy a steak of that price, like in Panama, it was 120 bucks, which in all honesty is a pretty good price for a, a – what was it? Like a 10 ounce Wagyu is a pretty good price. Yeah. But it's probably going to be a little more expensive in the States. And usually what they do is they come show you the piece of meat because it's so expensive before they cook it. Um, so it's a question you could ask. You could say, hey, can I see the cut before you guys cook it? At, at the really fancy places, that's what they do. But if it's just a regular steakhouse that just has the one Wagyu on the menu, it probably they probably won't. But ask for it, salt and pepper only. That's just how it should be cooked. I'm going to. Dude, let me ask you something. Last meal. Oof. And by the way, you can get super specific, like my friend John's Brussels sprouts. <laughs> last, okay. But last meal. I think I think I'm gonna go surf and turf. I think I'm gonna go two four ounce lobster tails, a ten ounce wagyu steak, medium rare. I'm not gonna lie to you. I might go. Uh, Halisi's mac and cheese. Not going to lie. It was what I was about to say. <laughs> Halisi's mac and cheese. Mom's broccoli. By the way, everybody. And, Halisi and Charette's is. pumpkin pie. That's dessert. what I was going to say, too. Dude, that dessert is. Although. And my mom. Also, coffee. like. My mom. Coffee. coffee. God. Yo, my mom's oh. coffee. My mom's coffee cake. Oh, I, yes. Did I tell you I'd have her send me the recipe? Dude, you will be the keeper of it. My mom's for the rest coffee, of time. My mom's coffee cake and charrettes pumpkin. pumpkin loaf. Ooh, god, really tough call. Here, keep talking. I gotta go get a drink. But but, but I think I, I think for the sake of like where my loyalty is not the right word, but like where my trust resides, I'm going grandma's coffee cake. Well, I mean, look, oh, we're running out of time. I upgrade, you fuck. Well, how does that keep happening? I don't know, dude. I upgraded before I started this. I want you to know that I upgraded beforehand. So, and I got to... Are you re- sure I don't have to upgrade too? Like, 
No. Do I also have no? Because when we did this this Zoom with Gavin, he was able to upgrade it and get rid of the time thing. How you haven't been able to do it? I have zero idea. I don't know, but it's pretty, pretty funny. funny. Um, it's, it makes me laugh. I'm not gonna lie. I I too go stake that why you so I good to go lobster tail i also if i'm looking for a starchy starch mac and cheese would i be also yo that white truffle white truffle mac and cheese from lemonade here in la yeah yo i, I had it last night crazy i think i'm going alisi's mac and cheese yeah right i think so too I think it's I think it's the I think it's the right call. Mac and cheese is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Hold on one second, dude. What something's happening in this refrigerator. To find something happening in the refrigerator. You don't want me to. Oh. Excuse me, I just burped. It sounds like based on that, something's leaking. Well, we'll find out. Um, that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. And yet he still continues to drink his drink that he looked at very suspiciously. Dude, you know me. <laughs> I don't fucking. I would have done the same thing probably. Um, I have to tell you, this sometimes I come into cities, and I'm like, I can't wait to get out of here. Austin's a good city, man. But I this trip, oh, dude. Last night, first of all, I got to perform at a venue, Austin City, right? ACL Live. That you know, you see on TV, everybody's performed there. So yeah. to be able to perform there last night was like check it off the list. But it yeah, was, I was gonna say, is that is that bucket list for you? Like yeah. easy? Yeah. Nice. It was a private party, and private parties are hit or miss. Yeah. Because nobody, Absolutely. right? At a comedy club, to me, it's not hit or miss anymore. People are there, or a theater. People are there to see me, right? Right, 100%. But at a private party, the they, person who hired you is the one who could be the only person who knows who you are. Not only that, not only the only person who knows who I am, but the only person that wants to hear comedy. Or cares. At a big convention slash, these people are leaving their families for a weekend from all around the country to descend onto Austin where there's open bar and a band, you know what I mean? They could yeah. give, and I don't blame them, oh, fuck about stand-up. Do you know what I mean? Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. So, That's not what they're there for. Nah, and it was a Star Wars theme. So there were these people walking around in these crazy ass, like $1,500 costumes. Like it was like Anime Expo at a private party, but only Star Wars. You know, these people did not That's want crazy. to see me at all. But to be able to perform on that stage and hang out backstage and all that was so cool. But you know what yeah, I really yeah. I want to ask you about? Huh. You know, I post on my socials, mm -hmm. but nothing personal, nothing my day to day. Like last night, I didn't take one picture when I was there. Part of it is because I like to live my life and I don't want to always have my right. Part of it is like, why is this interesting? But am I missing something? Should I be posting more of my day to day stuff? Like I, it's not that I don't post, man. I post material and content, but it's not, and it's not like I'm an ultra private person who doesn't share shit. I just, it's like, who the fuck cares what I'm doing on my day to day? Well, but that's the thing, though, is like I feel like posting on your day to day makes you a little more more vulnerable, but also it gives people an opportunity to think they can like relate to you a little more. Right. So if you get up, the first thing you do is you make a coffee and walk the dog. Other people who are like, oh, yo, that's the first thing I do in the morning. Right. So like, I don't know, it's it's almost making yourself a little more relatable to the your everyday person because they get to see what you're doing and how you're doing it and where you're doing it right so honestly bro actually i think on your youtube channel it might be a fun idea to do like a a day in the life right so like uh i used to watch it all the time like wiz khalifa machine gun kelly uh logic all these guys they do a day in a life 
And so it's like from when you wake up to when they go to sleep, there's a cameraman who's filming them constantly and they cut it together as a day in the life of Wiz Khalifa. What am I doing on tour? What am I doing when we have photo shoots? Do you know what I'm saying? So like it, it, it lets people get a little insight to somebody's private life and see what they do on a daily basis. How- it, was one of, it was one of my favorite things to watch. Wiz Khalifa back in like 2012, 2013, he put out a string of like 10 or 20 of them and just pushed them out. So we could do like a day in the life of us on the road. So it's like we get up, we go grab breakfast, we go on a walk. He goes to the gym, I do this. And then we add a little, a couple of clips here and there, like what you're doing, what I'm doing. And then we show clips of the show, right? And so, and then we're backstage and we're talking to the, the openers and stuff like that. And then whatever we choose to do at the end of it, which is usually, you know, both you and I are, are, are getting high separately, right? So that's what we do at the end of our day. And then when we go to bed, it's like a cool shot of me turning off the lamp as it ends and it fades to black and then it wakes up on a new day, right? Um, it just gives people, it lets people think that they know you better than they actually do, right? Which I think a lot of people already think they know you so well because your comedy is so personal and about family. So people can relate to it and think, oh, he's just another dad, right? Right. So the the posting more personal stuff, like, you know, you post with mom and you post with me and you post pictures with Trev. Like, that's all fine. But I, but don't, you but I, don't, I, I don't post a lot of pictures. No, and, and that's fine. However, you know, there are sometimes you're on the road and you go, damn, I wish I had a picture of that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. or I wish I had a picture of that memory or what we were doing or the escape room. Right. So every now and then for you also, because especially with mom not there, we're both living the moment, guys. But there are times where you're going to want to relive that moment again. And then you don't have a photo and then you can't do it. Again. How come you don't post more? Like, like, you I, post, how come you, and you don't like on TikTok at all? Or how come you don't post more? TikTok? I don't know. TikTok has become. I, I struggle to find ideas for what I think would be funny on TikTok. So I think I overthink it a little too much. I think you I think I have I think I have great ideas. Like I have something that I want to do called high temperature cooking, except, you know, I'm super high while making food. Right. So, and it's just like me being able to make easy meals while I'm stony. Um, the Jacob tries, right. So like I have, we've got the ideas or high temperature reviews, me getting kind of high and watching people cook something and then reviewing it and then trying to attempt it. Like the ideas are there. I think it's more just like with my work now that I'm working five days a week again, 12 hours a day. Um, I just think that is just going to fall a little harder. Um, but the posting on Instagram, the thing is like, you know, it's crazy is I have a bunch of pictures that I could post that, you know, my, my girlfriend and mom is the best photographer and best videographer ever. Yeah. Like to have her just take personal pictures of me because she wants to, it's great. I just, uh, you know, truthfully, sometimes I forget and sometimes I'm lazy and I forget how much it drives people to my, to my page. I used to post on my story all the time to get two, yeah, 3000 people looking at it. Now I barely get a thousand people looking at my story. So I just gotta, I just forget how much it will help my platform. I just, uh, it just slips my mind because I'm focusing on work, like real work, but come the new year when this will be my work, it's going to be different, but you know, we're going to catch steam going into the new year and I'll make sure that, you know, posting is a little more prominent for sure. Okay. okay. The Hey Man t-shirts are on their way to Cleveland. Fuck yeah. Do you want me to bring the rest of the shirt that I have, the shits that I have? Will you tell me? I think it's just I like weird shit. I think it's like 20 I like weird shits in XL and a couple I ordered the porn. Yeah, just bring the weird shit. You can give away the I ordered the porn. Great. Well, I didn't order the porn. It's the white one. If I were you, I would start to do some giveaways on your. Okay. So I don't remember what we were talking about before we stopped. So this might seem a little disjointed, but. Yep. Dude. Football is. Fuck yeah. Um, it's, it's the time of year where ever, or not every, but most uh, wives and girlfriends are mad at their boyfriends and husbands on Sundays yeah. and Mondays and, and Thursdays and Saturdays. Most of the week for about 25 weeks, everybody. Get ready for it. Here's what's crazy. And here's how you can, here's how I can tell for me. Ah, it's so interesting. Because if somebody asks you, what's your sport? I would probably say baseball. Me too. Okay. However, football is the only sport I can consistently watch 
if I don't care about either team. Like I'm not right. watching a Twins Orioles baseball game. Not a chance. But I would watch Jaguars Cardinals and I could give a fuck about either team. Yeah, that's like that's kind of how I've gotten with like watching uh European football. Oh, really? Just like yeah, like with English with English Premier League like Every Sunday and Saturdays they play games, and most of the time my team isn't a high enough priority to be put on television. So I just turn on the game that's on, and I just watch it for yeah. ninety minutes. Yeah, hundred percent. I've started doing it a lot, probably in the last year and a half. That's awesome, dude. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I love it, bro. Dig that, huh? What's up? That's how much you dig soccer. Mm-hmm. It's become one of my new favorite things to watch, just because I've gotten so into it. Over the last couple of years, you and hated it growing so, up, dude. I hated it. I hated playing it. I still probably would still hate playing it. Yeah, it's one but, of my favorite Jacob Wolf stories. Yeah, so, guys, when Jakey was, it's the first year you were playing soccer. Seven, six, not seven, yeah. not seven. No, and no, nah, and you were struggling in a way that I and I didn't know why. And it t- later, by the way, it turns out he, you had a. You had asthma, but also you had an allergy to, gl- to grass. And, and really? Especially the cut grass. And so that combination, you would, it would, was really tough for you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you – it was so different than any sport you'd ever played, and I didn't quite understand why. Mm-hmm. We weren't talking about it. And then that last game, you took your jersey off. And on your way over to the party, you know, for Capri Sun and orange slices, mm-hmm. you took your shirt off and you handed it to me and you said, I'm never playing that sport again. And I was like, and I never did. No. But I was so crazy because you didn't complain about it all year. You didn't say shit. And then you just handed me your jersey. You're like, yeah, I'm never playing that. And you didn't. Ever. Dude, do you Ever. remember when we moved out of Matilla? Huh? It's so funny, dude. Okay. So I saved every jersey you mm-hmm. ever had from any sports team you had ever played on. Uh-huh. I remember that box. And I put that box in the garage. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying to your mom, ah, he's going to be so fucking psyched when I show him this. He's going to, this is going to be like huge. And I remember moving out of Matilda and, I remember being like, I can't wait to show him this. He's going to fucking love this. And I was like. <laughs> I mean, granted, I did. I thought it was cool, but there was nothing I could do with him. Like, what am I supposed to do with a jersey that fits barely yeah. my right thigh? You, I go, here you go, man. And you're like, what is that? And I told you, and you're like, that's great. I'm like, do you want it? And you're like, no. And I- <laughs> what am I going to do with it? I, yeah, dude, I don't know. I was thinking he's going to fucking, for sentimental, he's going to fucking love this. And guess what? Now, I threw away all the trophies, too, man. I had some really big, oh, we some, threw really away awesome, some really awesome trophies. That one from uh, Sherman Oaks Little League that was, like, full bronze, it was, like, that was, like, a heavy, that was, like, a heavy trophy. That was, like, a legitimate trophy. Yeah. And then that one also we won with that Angels team at Beeman, that really tall one, that plastic gold one. Oh, yeah, I, I got it. too. I bought that one. You bought that? I did not. They, that was a championship trophy, right? Yeah. They were giving us a championship trophy that looked like everybody else's trophy, and I was like, nah. Fuck no. Nah. No. They they wanted. I was like, they they won. They get a bigger trophy. Yeah, but we want every kid to feel included. Fuck you. We worked hard all year to win a championship. Give you know, me my big trophy. You know what's crazy? The trophy part of the participation hate it hate it I, you're not giving a trophy to a fourth place you know why you tell them hey man sorry you were one place off work harder next year like like even at a young age when i didn't win a trophy i was like damn i want to win a fucking trophy and we went out yeah. and we worked that yeah. was it it was the motivation for us was yeah I agree. Uh, we didn't win we didn't win great let's go work even harder I like, agree. When you start that from a young but, age, I agree. But it, I will say the work for them. I will say this. I I I think people go about I think the youth sports is a, a travesty, right? I think 
people make having their kids play one sport all year round is the fucking biggest mistake you can make and ask the professional players if they think you should be having your kids play the same sport one burnout is terrible two yeah. the pressure you're putting on a 12 year old having him play baseball 12 months a year whether you believe it or not that's what they think they they have to be great at you know you're, you're telling them what you expect from them yeah but, but like the burnout but like yo the delusion I, I, you were a great youth league baseball player truly yeah great great and i you there were games where you were pitching and you were great where i was like oh nobody's touched Nobody's gonna touch. No, there were some teams that we faced growing up where I was like, I'm just better than oh, every single was, kid on your team. I was like, oh, nobody's gonna. However, you are not close to a major league baseball player, right? Not so, a chance. Yo, know, I played college baseball. Decent athlete. Not Pretty good athlete. Close. So it would make me laugh, man, when these people would show up. So for me, I think. And this is why the trophy is, I get what you're saying about the trophy, but for me, the big thing with youth sports, and I agree with you actually now that I'm thinking about it, even with youth sports for people who aren't going to play professional baseball, it's important for people to know there it's, it's okay to have different levels and the excellent people who work harder or whatever, or excellence gets rewarded. Yeah, I, I'm with that. But for me, the number one goal of every youth coach have should, fun should be that every person on this team enjoyed themselves so much that they want to play again next year next week next yeah. year not next week oh oh next year yeah you want them to be like i can't wait for baseball again next year mm -hmm. that was yo know, for me for me success was the next year, everybody on the team, even though they're not on the same team, was back in the league mm -hmm. playing because they had such a good time. Absolutely. Yeah, that was it. For me. We we turned some non-baseball players into some pretty good baseball players. I'm not going to lie, though. But we, but not really. You know what we? You know what I did, dude? Here's what I I think: confidence in life is everything. Right. So, if I, if your kid came and was not an athlete and not good what i did was i did not try to teach them baseball i tried to teach them one skill that was it they for sure was not they were not going to learn every skill so i had to pick out of the mul multiple things that can happen on a baseball field what is the one thing that your kid doesn't completely suck at and i would make them as good as i could at that so they had confidence at that and that right. confidence sometimes permeated into different parts but most importantly you know i remember one kid dude all he was was fast no hand eye coordination couldn't hit the ball couldn't catch the ball couldn't throw the ball but that dude was fast quick so i leaned into him run on the bases I remember telling him, if you get on base, don't stop running. And he was like, what? I'm like, I treated it like T-ball. I was like, don't stop. make him get you out. You're so fucking fast. You get on first base. As soon as that ball gets hit, keep running. Run. Just run, Forrest, run. And yo, he didn't get on first very often. But when he did, dude, he was. He scored. But he was a different kid. And when he got back to the bench, he was he wasn't this shy, timid, I don't know what I'm doing. He was like, Did you guys see me? I'm so full, I could feel bad, you know. And so, like, and his mom told me when he would come to the games, dude, and this was exactly why I did it. He would come to the games and he would say to her, Mom, you've got to watch me. If I get on first base today, I'm gonna score. And and like that was it for me, man. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, it would look he i'm sure he's somewhere right now doing something completely non-athletic 
Yeah, it's but, possible. But I promise you, when he looks back on those times, as and, and dude, there are a lot of young kids who aren't athletes who get put on those teams who have miserable times. And they and what they think about athletes or jocks, they have a bad taste in their mouth because they had such a bad experience. Absolutely. I, prom- I promise you that kid who's your age now, who's doing something completely non-athletic, thinks about his peewee league in positive glowing terms. And that's all you can ask for. And also, like I think the thing for me also why youth sports are getting ruined is because look, parents, and this is aimed at you and coaches. Ladies and gentlemen, when you take the sport more seriously than your son or or daughter who is playing the game, you are too invested and need to take a step back. I have a question. Like for me, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So you, and I don't remember because it was so long ago, but you are young enough, you might still remember. Do you remember any overbearing parents or parents that yelled from the stands or anything like that? And how did that make you feel as a kid? Or, because you know I wasn't doing it, but do you know any kids whose parents did, and how did that make them feel? You'll remember this one. I'm not going to say the name. No names, no names, yep. Remember, uh, but I'll say the name for the coach we played for because they're still good friends of ours, the Rockland. Remember when we played with Steven and Glenn? Yep. There was a kid on our team whose mom would never shut her damn Oh, yeah, 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 remember. Ever, ever. Like, no matter what happened, whether it was a foul or she thought she saw something, she would yell at the ref. Basketball. Yes. Yo, for me, as a player on his team, I was so angry. Because so I as, a player, as a player on the team, hearing that person's parents scream all the time was like, what the fuck? I couldn't focus on anything because all I heard was her running her mouth. Whether it was to another parent the ref or God forbid Glenn Rockland for her trying to tell us how to coach like, yo, parents, you cheer coaches, you coach refs, you ref players, you play. That is the bottom line. And that is it. Do you remember how that might've made him feel the kid? I don't remember. He was embarrassed. Yo, he was embarrassed because we would laugh at him because his mom wouldn't shut his, her mouth. We would laugh at him. Right. That's something I hadn't thought of. Like, Parents, you're, just, yeah, yeah, you're fucking with your kids. Yeah, if you're self-projecting, guys, you're embarrassing the fuck out of your kid. Stop, stop talking. Like, let the kids play and let the refs ref and let the coaches coach. You are supposed to be there for emotional and moral support for your child. That is it. Can That's I? It. That's dude, it. I've told you this before. If I wasn't doing this, I told your mom this. I was like, do you think it'd be weird? If I took time off next summer and just coached kids baseball, no, and I didn't have any kids on the team, she was like, maybe a little weird. But what if your kid is helping you coach? You would have to be living in Vegas. Who wants to play baseball in Vegas in the summer? Well, I'm sure they play baseball. Did the Patriots get crushed again? Patriots got crushed. But Mac Jones didn't throw an interception. Tyreek Hill didn't score a touchdown. Matt, yo, Mac threw for over 200 yards. He didn't have a bad game. He just, yeah. we're just not good. <laughs> not good. It's we're just not good. No, not good. Not good. And, and like, you know, that question about was it Hoodie or Brady? Yeah. We know the answer now. It, you know, what's funny when Brady was on the team, I leaned Hoodie. And now that Brady's not on the team, I lean. Brother, it's for sure Brady. I don't know. I don't, it's not even a conversation. Look no. at the last. Brother, he went and won a seventh Super Bowl on another team. I know. It's 100% Brady. I don't, I don't, there's not even a conversation about it. Well, what really shows me is that, look, Brady had wide Nobody. Receiving, yeah, wide receiving cores as bad as the ones on New England now and was putting up numbers, you know? I mean, look, prime 2007 when we went, almost went undefeated and should have gone undefeated. Fuck you, Plax Um, it that receiving core, Randy Moss, Wes Welker. That's a that's a good that's a good core. Great, yeah. But every other Super Bowl he's had, not great. No, I mean 2001, 2002. He had Gronk and Edelman. 
Yeah, but who Gronk was hurt half the time he was playing for the Patriots. True. He didn't play in three of those Super Bowls, I'm pretty sure. Is that true? I'm pretty sure that last one we won against the Falcons, he didn't play 100%. Huh. He didn't play in two Super Bowls at least. So all he had was Edelman. Yeah. And still, even just saying that, it's like, yeah, Julian Edelman's a good receiver, but he's not a number one threat. Well, I mean, he's, he's a shallow threat for a dude who can run crosses and run shallows and take the ball after contact. Hall of Fame? Dude's got three Super Bowl rings. Uh, yeah. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know if his career stats put him up to it, but to, from where he came from, where he started in this league, when he was a quarterback at college, turned re- receiver, three Super yeah. Bowl rings. I don't know if he's quite possibly that. one of the most clutch catches in Patriots history. There's no doubt about that. If you're just slot receivers, he's in the slot receiver Hall of Fame. A hundred percent. But I, I would. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Putting him in the full f- football Hall of Fame is. Hey, I don't know if there's there's no slot receiver Hall of Fame, obviously, but. No, that's a hard one. I just like Dustin Pedroia Hall of Fame. God, I fucking hope so, man. Me too. I don't think so, but I hope so. I don't think so, but one of the most loved players in baseball, man. Well, look, dude, for me, criteria Hall of Fame is that you have to be top five, especially at your position. For I new- mean, in his in his prime, though, no doubt he was top hey. five, no question, dude. No doubt, no doubt. In his prime, he was. I mean, depends on what you're going for, but I t- I would have taken him over Cano just for intangibles. Yeah. And Cano also, was, Cano's, Cano's a little bit of a cancer in the locker room. Petey's your locker room guy. Cano is the purest swing, but you, swing. You, want, you want Petey out there grinding. Yeah, I, I want Petey for sure. Fuck yeah. I love um, Petey, man. I was Speaking of Petey, I was, watching a, I was watching a TikTok the other day, a couple-part TikTok about how people hate Manny Machado and how he's the dirtiest player in baseball. And how he ruined Petey's career. He did fuck up his career. And he always, I remember watching his interviews going, it wasn't intentional. Like, there was no intention. Brother, your foot was pointed up at him. I don't know how you call that non-intentional. Yeah. And just watching watching some of the stuff that guy said and what he did, like, I'm not surprised so many people have thrown a ball at his head. Like, I will shit, I say this too. about Machado. And I don't say, I'm not a dude who speaks poorly about people I don't know. So I don't know, I don't know, I don't know him personally. But he, I, he has the douchiest look on his face all of the time. All the time. Like, 100%. He, all, he's got the date rapiest look on his face. Yeah. Uh, all the time. Like that, I just have nothing like, good to say about that guy. He looks like he was born with puka shells on. Like, dude. Douche- he looks like he was born with puka shells in, in a pike frat house. Like, the dude is just no oh, good. Like, uh, you didn't have pike as a fraternity? No. No. Huh. Well, just so you know, the the rumor for Pikes, and not the rumor for Pikes, but the Pikes have a national reputation of being the largest assholes on campus. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, um, all right, listen, I get like, a- like it. Like, sorry, one more one more story. Yeah, yeah. But like at LSU, their their house was right off campus, so they had a neon sign outside their house. It was green and red. When it was green, everything was good. When it was glowing red, they were beating the shit out of their pledges. So dumb. I saw it red too a couple times. So I I went back to my dorm. Were you kind of pledged then? Well, no. Do you want to? That was the only house I got to walk into before I got kicked out of Rush. You want to know what they did? Yeah. What do you mean? Walked you're in, allowed to walk into people's houses? No. Remember, I was kicked out of Rushing because I wasn't on a list. So I didn't get okay. to. That's right. You could probably walk into one of those houses if you knew somebody, but I'm not randomly knocking on a freaking Pike store. Hell no. I knew Pike's reputation before I got to college, so I didn't. You know, did? Good. Well, my ex at the time was already in college. Oh, that's right. So I w- I had a little bit of an insight. However, I remember I was rushing, and I well, the first place I walked in was Pike, and Pike because they were closest to campus. Pike, leader of the fraternity. I I'm gonna guess leader because he was, and you'll understand why. The house is a mess. Everybody's running around. Everybody's drinking. There's loud music. And there's a pool table in the middle of the room. There is a gentleman standing on top of the pool table. And he has his back to us. And all I can see between his legs is him taking a piss off the pool table onto their floor. And then he turned around, shotgunned a beer, and he said, Rush Pike, bitches. Half of the guys like me were like, what the fuck? And the other half of the guys were like, yeah! 
and I was like, dude, I, this is not for me. I'm like, <laughs> it was not for me. It was not. Nope. And I was like, I was like, if I rush, God forbid I get a bid from Pike, I will fucking run home to California. <laughs> like, what in the world did I walk into? Holy shit. Yeah, that sounds like some meathead shit me and my friends probably would have Oh, that sounds like some Listen. animal house kind of shit. I mean, oh Listen, my God. I want to tell you, man, in college, I was a little more meatheady than you probably want to know. Nah, I mean, look, you were, look, and I hate to say this, you were a college athlete. I know you were a meathead in college. Yeah, I was, look, I wasn't full meathead, but I was 72%. You were a baseball player. Your footballs and your basketball players are 100% meathead. Your baseball players are a very close third. We may have it up. We definitely did. Yeah, but, you know, that's what part of college is for is, you know, going through your phase and then getting out of it. It's uh-huh. the people that get stuck in their meathead phase that have issues. That's right. <laughs> um, so, that's all. Listen, dude, I'm going to work out before I take your um, – ooh, the Browns hit a 58-yard field goal with eight seconds left to beat. Nice. Uh, the – the Saints hit a game-winning 53-yard field goal as well against the Falcons. I saw that. Um, so, oh, the Buccaneers yeah. play the Cowboys tonight? Oh, that's what I'll be watching. Um, um, listen. But yeah, go have fun with them. You're going to go work out before you take them to dinner. Yeah. Y'all have a great time. Guys, ComedianJoshua.com for tour dates. Uh, we will be coming up. Cleveland this weekend, hilarities. Yo. Last time I was in Cleveland, I saw somebody get shot. So let's switch those memories up, everybody. I hope we have. I'm super excited. The hotel's awesome. Downtown Cleveland's great. Um, everybody, tell. Just don't. We're we're definitely not ordering room service from that hotel. No, we don't want the <laughs> quesadilla with Caesar salad dressing. <sighs> so but but everybody, family tussle comes out in October. Can't wait. We'll talk to you about some of the press. Yep. Um and. Uh, Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. If you're in New Mexico, man, go out. Please come check me out in August. It means a lot. This this early, this new theater tour is going to be great. Yeah, man. I'm super excited. I can't wait. And Australia, for our foreign listeners listening, if you are in Australia, we will be going to multiple cities in Australia and New Zealand. Please come out and say what's up. I can't wait. It's going to be my first time there. Um, overly excited is is an understatement. Come get some. I love uh, Jake, Jake, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Tell somebody you love them. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>